Brethren, let's commit ourselves to the Lord now. Let's talk to him to open our mind and our hearts to receive the wisdom, the grace, and the power that comes from heaven. Because our relationship with God is based on forgiveness. That may God help us as we hear these things to remain faithful in him by showing the same grace, the same love into forgiveness at home, at church, and everywhere we go in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time because we know that your house is a school. And whenever we come, you teach us the truth of your word. I pray at this time, as we go through this topic, that you speak straight to our hearts in Jesus' name. Help us see our weaknesses and our failure more than our strength. That going from there, Lord, we change in our character. We change in our condom in a way to affect our neighbor, our wives, our children, and anyone that we have, will have to come in contact with us in Jesus' name. Speak to us, O oh Lord. You know everyone, and you know what our lives are. Let your word be directed to the need of forgiveness in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's have a seat, please. So at this hour, we want to consider a very important topic. All the topics we've been talking about are all important, but we want to emphasize the word forgiveness and the power that goes with it. And I believe the Lord will speak to you and I in Jesus' name. So to begin with, we are going to open our Bibles in Matthew chapter 6, reading verse 12, 14, and 15. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we, we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14, verse 15. They are, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Praise the Lord. This topic is familiar. But it's the one that we Christians of nowadays fail God the most. But I pray as we hear of this and we amend our, our ways, the Lord will turn things around in our homes, in our family, in our churches, and if not, in a community in Jesus' name. So we're talking about forgiveness. It is a divine attribute that the Lord has commanded us to grant those who offend or hurt us. And that starts from home and goes to the place of work, even beyond. The Lord has sent us our relationship with him through the forgiveness. As we all know, we are born in sin. If not of the forgiveness of God, we wouldn't have become Christian. Now that we are enjoying this love, this passion that was in Christ who gave his life for us, we are also called to reciprocate the same love, the same act of forgiveness toward others. And that's where we are mostly challenged. And I pray today, as the word of God come down, that the power to forgive and forgive for good, the Lord will give you and I in Jesus' name. So we need to realize how Christ has forgiven us and produced the same generous attitude of forgiveness toward others. That's what the Lord is asking from us. When we do not forgive others, we are placing ourselves outside the reach or the influence of Christ's law of love. What is Christianity without love? Suppose that Jesus didn't love us so much 
as it is said in John chapter 3, verse 16, he wouldn't have given our life to us so that we may have the salvation that we are enjoying. The goodness and the mercy of God toward us is the pattern that we should follow in all our dealings with others. When you are in relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your colleague at work, or wherever you found yourself, you have to have that in mind all the time. I have to have it in mind all the time. That as God has forgiven all our sins, as penitent Christian, we should also not withdraw the forgiveness from others, whether they are believers or unbelievers. But everything should start from the home and go to the church and then finish in the society. I pray that these hearts, the Lord will give to you and I in Jesus' name. So what is the commandment here? God commands us to grant forgiveness to everyone, no matter how grave, how bad the offense may be. There was this uh, French uh, writer and, uh, uh, and um, a member of the academy that said, the closer the person, the deeper the wound. And that's why if your, your spouse, husband or wife offended you, you will feel it deeply because of the love that you have for him or her. The same way we hurt the hearts of our Lord Jesus Christ if we did something against his will. So we are held responsible to do things according to God's will, beginning from the home. You see, there are many more blessings in being in peace with, which, uh, with one another, in love and forgiveness. Because our children also are there. We are the first trainer or the first instructor or the first teacher for them. So if we don't emulate that love in a very practical way, we may come on the pulpit and preach about it, and the children will say, oh, let, let him talk. Let dad talk. Let mom talk. I don't know anything about this because we did not show it to each other. I pray that God will help us with that in Jesus' name. So as a child of God, do not seek vengeance against anyone. Because verse 5 said, uh, If ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So it's reciprocal. If you have already experienced the true salvation in Christ, you will know how important, how priceless forgiveness could be. And let me tell you this, and I come the hard way to experience this myself, is that if you forgive someone, you are not doing anyone favor than yourself. Am I right? Because you will heal from it, and life will get much better, where bitterness and frustration will be cast out. I pray that this sentiment, none of those remain in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Christian forgiveness is a great virtue in the believer's life, in the church, in the family, as well as in the family of the believer, between husband and wife, mostly. Christian forgiveness can be separately connected with reconciliation. If you forgive someone, you are looking for what? You are looking for reconciliation. It's also separately connected with love. If you forgive someone, you are showing the pure version of love. It's also separately connected with compassion and fellowship as well as repentance. If someone has done something that hurts you and maybe the person recognizes it or you recognize it and go and let it known by the person, he will say, I'm, I'm sorry, dear. I don't know what came over me. Please forgive me. Once this person did it, it's an act of repentance towards you. That's why we need to accept whenever somebody put himself together and come and ask for forgiveness. But sometimes we get it wrong. We want to do it, and at the same time, we don't want to. 
Can somebody want something and his opposite and succeed? It never works like that. So Christian forgiveness must not only be a one-time action, especially between husband and wife living under the same roof. Because offense will always come. The place I'm, come, I'm coming from, they say it's only the mountain that will not see each other. As long as we are a you know, living creature, we have to walk on someone's toes. When I first got married, I continued living like the bachelor I was, you know, listening to the radio, you know, reading books. And I would let my wife wandering there in the, in the salon, in the, on the couch, and she would come and say, young man, now you are married. I'm here. I need some attention. <laughs> and uh, I realized that, hey, something needs to change. But when she first said that, it hurts me. But... I went to the bedroom, I couldn't sleep. I was thinking, yeah, she's right. So I went to her and I said, honey, you know what? I'm sorry. But what you said really crushed me. And she smiled at me and I said, no, I'm just trying to get things work for us. And I'm grateful for that. Since then, we have become, let's say, uh, a twins. <laughs> it's hard to separate us and nothing will separate us in Jesus' name. So because offense will come, we should make it a point of, you know, a responsibility, a point of obligation, not to randomly forgive. Sometimes we will say, okay, I know, uh, monthly I will forgive once, or yearly, how many uh, quarters we have in a year, four. So each quarter I will forgive. Past that time, it's locked down. Mm -mm. It should be a continual action. It should be an ongoing thing happening between husband and wife, between children and parents, between uh, uh, colleagues or business partner or whatever relationship is considered. It is an ongoing thing, continual and repeated action of grace that show that you, that is showing that kind of forgiveness, you too have received it from the Lord. So you cannot give what you don't have. And you cannot explain what you did not experience. I pray that if the point of contention is the fact that you are not yet born again and you have not yet experienced that forgiveness, let that grace be given to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. So three points quickly before we pray. Number one, the plea and prayer for forgiveness. Plea and prayer for forgiveness. You know, as I've just said it, you cannot forgive properly if you are not be forgiven. That's how it works. Number two, possibilities and peril of unforgiveness from believers. If you refuse, as verse 15 in our, uh, in our test said, it will be a dangerous a way that you are taking. And then number three, power and practice of Christian forgiveness. I believe my time will be sufficient to go through all this. But by the grace of God, we'll see all this through in Jesus' name. So forgiveness or pardon of sin are most essential and most blessed and most difficult out of act of God over, or, 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 over, the, over, the, over the situation of man. Why? Because... Look, before we are forgiven, it caused Jesus, his begotten son, to lay down his life and die like a criminal for the criminals that we are. So it caused God a lot to come in turn with men. That's why it's one of the most difficult. It's most essential because it keeps us from eternal suffering in hell and gives us joy in our present life with fellowship. We have this fellowship, this communion with God based on the forgiveness. Otherwise, there is nothing we have to, to show God. It is the most blessed because it secures us a place in heaven to live forever with God. It is the most difficult, as I've said, because it costs God, his son, the very, his very life, 
to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Forgiveness of sin is man's deep need, even in the Christendom. It's also God's gift. You cannot get it until you are conscious that you need it. And when you need it, and you sincerely, with all your heart, go to God asking for it, I believe our God is the best of the Father. He will grant it to you in Jesus' name. And having experienced it, now it is your turn to extend the same love, the same act of forgiveness toward somebody else, especially those that offend us. They need our forgiveness. So husband and wife, how are you doing? How many griefs or frustration are you carrying? I pray that if there is any frustration in any family, in any home today, the Lord will cancel those frustrations away and love and joy and perfect harmony God will give you and I in our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. So how do you come to that term with God? By confessing and, 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 and forsaking our sin. We believe in Christ. We believe in his vicarious, you know, death on the cross for us. That's why I bring us forgiveness. If you are not the kind of person that can feel deeply for your wrongdoing, then you have not experienced yet salvation. And if you haven't yet experienced salvation, then when somebody hurts you, you know, manifestly you can't forgive. The two are linked. And I pray that if this cord is still linking you to your past, the Lord will break it today in Jesus' name. So the word of God is full of promises of God's mercy and forgiveness. Just to talk about a few examples in the Bible, we see the case of David. He murdered that uh, officer in his army, took his wife. He went to God in a very sorrowful manner, regretting every bit of his wrongdoing. God has forgiven him. The Ninevites, they were told that in a few days, their city would destroy because of their repetitive sin. They, they took the sackcloth, the fast, even they make the animal fast that day. God has forgiven. Paul, the great Judaist, was chasing and killing and murdering Christians. He was, he was there when uh, Stephen was killed. He, he rejoiced of that. But when God makes him on the way to Damascus, he, re he repent. So repentance is the beginning, is the, the, the starting point of true forgiveness. I pray that we get this and run with it, and God will make our home better than it had ever been in Jesus' name. So encourage every sinner to come to God for mercy, grace, and forgiveness. That's what we need. Encourage one another in that. As leaders and workers in the church, members may come to us asking for the same help. If you have not really in real time experienced it, it will be difficult for you to solve. But if you have already have it in your life, what do you do? You tell your story. I, the place where I work at, they call me storyteller. I've never lacked example to support uh, my views. I will always tell you a story. And once the person will, leave, will hear your own story, will say, wow, this is a blessing of God. Pastor or uh, brother so-and-so, pray for me. And that prayer you will pray for that person will come from your heart. And that prayer will surely solve the matter in Jesus' name. So main great spiritual need is forgiveness that God has promised and provided. What we need is to put ourselves there and tell God we mean business. We need his forgiveness. We want to repent from our heart. Sometimes at the workplace, some colleague will come and say, we know you are, you are a servant of God. Here is this case. Can you please help us? And I'll take the person aside or listen to story. It always comes to what? Forgiveness or unforgiveness between husband and wife. 
between business partner, between friends. So it's a big deal. Last week, somebody sent me a, a video of a lady who is one of the church here, and uh, she kind of had some health problem and was dead to meet the Lord, to hear that she couldn't go to heaven because she missed the point. And he said, Lord, what have I done? I say, somebody came to you even this morning begging for pardon. You say through your lips that you have forgiven that person, but in your heart, you didn't. For that reason, you're going nowhere. You see how important that issue of forgiveness could be. So if we comply, then the eternal judge has, has declared that he will pardon us. He will justify you. He will purify you and make you a new creature. The eternal judge has become his heavenly father, our heavenly father. And the spirit of God bear witness to our spirit that we are forgiven. Go through that process. And I believe, my brother, my sister, that you will not be weak when it comes to forgiving others. I pray that God grants you and I this grace in Jesus' name. Now, point number two, quickly because of our time. The possibility and peril of forgiving forgiveness from the believers. Though we know Christ, sometimes we are weak in the point of forgiving. And having received infinite mercy of God's grace and forgiveness, we ought to show gratitude to our creator by forgiving others' creatures. So if you are forgiven, you forgive me because I wound you, I did something against you. It's not just that action. It's not just to me. You are extending it to God, your creator. You are showing God that, Lord, I love you so much. Thank you for having forgiven me. And because of that, I am entitled forgiving my brother. I pray that whatever situation we are in now, with friends and relatives, colleagues at home, uh, at work, husband and wife at home, the Lord grant us the heart of forgiveness. It's a wonderful experience. Once you do that, you are free. Your heart is free. I used to have that experience many years back when one of our brother really, really, you know, uh, really caused me some trouble. And everything I would do, he would not appreciate it. He always find things to say about my actions and my deed. Sometimes even, you know, put some intentions that I do not have. So I, I become so frustrated. I did not know how to do. And any time I remember him, it gets me going really, really angry. I struggled with that for many years. But one day, my wife and I, we were praying, and that just came up. The Lord told me, if you don't forgive your brother, you're not coming with me. It was clear. The message was there. That's the day I got broken. I pray that this also will be your experience in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and danger and clamor and evil speaking put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving, one another, even as God, Christ, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. For God, for Christ's sake. It's not because we have any merit. It's not because we have talents or things that impress God. We are all sinners and doomed to be, to be sentenced at the end of our life. But for Christ's sake, God has forgiven us. So in the house, with children and spouse, the same spirit of forgiveness must live on if we have truly, you know, experienced Christ, our creator. I pray by God's grace that there will be no matter or problem that will be difficult to forgive. 
will continue to forgive each other in Jesus' name. You know, forgiveness strengthens love. It makes love last longer. It makes love powerful. But it's still also a challenge. It's still also a challenge. C.S. Lewis once said this about forgiveness. Everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely thing until they have to forgive someone. It is when you are confronted with a situation that you know if really, really you have the spirit of forgiveness. I pray that the Lord will help us with that in Jesus' name. And there also a survey conducted about forgiveness. And it shows that forgiveness is great in theory, but very difficult in practice. They took that uh, survey and they realized that 57% 57, uh, 57 of the people that were interviewed believed that God has forgiven them. But only 52% have forgiven others. You see the gap. So that tells us that even in the Christendom, why, whether it's in the house between husband and wife or friends and colleagues, it's still a big deal. We need more grace, calling on God to break that selfishness because it's also a link to selfishness. If you don't consider your neighbor or your spouse as greater than you, as the Bible says, you will always put your personality in front, your, your, your ego, that big ego in front. I pray that God deal with that ego in our lives in Jesus' name. So God takes forgiveness very serious because of our relationship with him. This relationship is based on forgiveness. And there are still more benefit to forgiveness. Your fellowship with God flows freely when you are willing to forgive. But it gets very locked. It gets very, uh, very locked when you are filled with unforgiveness. What do we mean by that? That forgiveness also keeps Satan from getting advantage over us. We can check that with 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, and also in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 to 37. They tell us that not to let the sun go down on our anger to give the devil any such foothold or opportunity. I read the testimony of a lady who has an experience, who died on, you know, and then come back. She said, for 20 years, her husband has offended her. And all the leaders in the church get involved to, you know, solve the problem. But deep in her heart, she has never forgiven the husband. Until one day, something happened, and she passed out. And God dealt with her during that period. And then when she came out, she said, number one, the Lord was very, very angry at her. And number two, the Lord told her, not only she will apologize to her husband, but she will put up a message for the whole world to hear. So God take forgiveness very, very seriously. You are dogging an early grave if you don't forgive. Forgiveness also help us to have a good health. We know constant angry anger can cause somebody's blood pressure to go skyrocketing. All these health issues that are attached to it also tell us that we need to forgive. If we don't, then there are consequences. I pray that none of us face those consequences in Jesus' name. If they have been there, just apply the balm of Gilead. Learn to forgive today, and your situation will not remain the same in Jesus' name. So the, the Bible, but the, the, the Bible uh, gives us a word of advice that we should forgive and also try to forget. Somebody may tell me, ah, Pastor, you're right, but it's difficult to forgive and forget. And the forgiving part, forgiving part, I get it. But the forgetting part, I'm not quite sure. You can still have the remembrance of the fact. 
But how do you know that you are forgiving your spouse when it will not affect you emotionally? It becomes a point of story that you can tell someone to advise without getting angry again. But if the anger will come back again when you are revisiting those events, then you have not yet forgiven. You need serious prayer. You can call our leaders. They will help you for that in Jesus' name. Forgiveness is even more demanded in the home between husband and wife to the extent that somebody describes a perfect home as a place where two forgivers live. Praise the Lord. The Christian home is the home where two, let me add good to it, where two good forgivers live. And I pray that our homes will be such a place from now on in Jesus' name. Show mercy and forgiveness to others, and God will also show mercy unto you. The Lord doesn't want us to end our, our days and coming before his presence and get our sin sentence just because we refuse to forgive. So quickly, my time is almost run up. Number, point number three, power and practice of Christian forgiveness. Power and practice for Christian forgiveness. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 to 21. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If be possible, as much as lieth in you, be peaceable with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto, unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy anger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome with evil with good. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Would you like to become somebody who is successful in forgiving? There are practical steps that must be taken. One time, I asked the Lord, why is so many people want to forgive? I want to forgive so many people, but I'm not successfully doing it. Then I learned some step. Number one step, decide. Decide. You will never forgive if you wait until you feel like, like it. Choose to obey God and steadfastly resist the devil and his attempt to poison you with bitter thoughts. Don't entertain bitter thoughts. What I do mostly on my own part is that even if I consider the say or the attitude offensive, I want to look for something positive about the person that offends me. And I take the word of my so-called enemy very serious. The way I do it is this. I will examine what the person is saying to me and I say, Lord, if at least 1%, or what the person is saying about me or doing to me is right. Should I have the right to not to you know, continue in anger? And then I find that what is being said or what is done to me reflects a little bit of who I am, then it, the, the anger goes down. And I fell on my knees and I prayed because from that moment, you have already decided because there is something that you find about it that makes you you know, drop all your weapon against that person. Make a quality decision to forgive, and God will heal your wounded emotion in due time in Jesus' name. Number two, depend. You cannot forgive without power of the Holy Spirit. Depend on God. It's God's word. Take God as his word. It's God, I cannot do this on my own. You are the one that said that we should do it. Please help me here. I need your help. And God knows us more than we know ourselves. God knows when we are sincere. And God knows where we are not. Man, when you go to God, 
you want to depend on him and you mean business, he will apply this balm of Gilead on your heart in Jesus' name. And what was hard before will become cool. You have good feelings about all this situation. So if you are truly willing, God will be able, will enable you. And you must be also humble in the whole process and cry unto him so that he can come to your rescue. He will come to your rescue, husband and wife. He will come to your rescue, friends and, you know, business partners in Jesus' name. Number three, obey. The world tells us several things that we should do concerning forgiving our enemy. This is the word of God. It is the final authority in the affairs of men. So we, we, we stick to the world. We read those passages. We meditate them. We pray upon them. We even pray verses so that God's power, the power that is in the word, also will affect you and things will change in Jesus' name. And one way also to do is, as some of one of the verses have indicated, it is that to pray for our enemy and those who abuse or misuse us. And that is also reflected in some, you know, uh, homes. The, the husband is so abusive or the wife is so abusive and everything that happens hurts one of the spouse. Pray for that person. When the grace of God we get to that life, things will change dramatically in Jesus' name. Bless and do not curse. Say Romans chapter 12 verse 14. Your, your answer or reaction to the provocation will be a good one to defeat or to disarm, you know, the person in front of you. So the power of forgiveness definitely resides in love. If you have that gift called love, there is no hurt that will go deep to your soul. The love will take it out the next minute. Once you allow hatred or revenge or retaliation to go away, you will be able to forgive. You will be able to love again. And I pray that this love, the Lord put in everyone's heart, even from now on in Jesus' name. You know as husband and wife, what's going on in the, in the home between you and your wife, between you and your husband, between the children and the parents. We might not be perfect today, but because the word of God is perfect and it is God who is helping us, the power behind his word will give us the spirit of forgiveness. And that spirit will continue and lives on in Jesus' name. And first, the first person to benefit of the manifesting of a power of forgiveness, as I've said, is ourselves. It's a healing process. And the Lord, who has asked us to behave such way, will not abandon you in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9, before we pray, say that he who cover an offense, seek love. He who cover and offend, seek love. So, a man called Lewis B. Smitty said, to forgive is the test, is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. Praise the Lord. So the very person that will profit from forgiveness is you. So if you forgive someone, somebody, in fact, you are forgiving yourself. And you are setting a positive record of your conduct and your life before God. And God will bless you with that in Jesus' name. Husband and wife, are you challenged today? The Lord will continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. I want you to just speak to the Lord. It is his word. And today, he wants to finish that business of unforgiveness in our lives, whether it's between husband and wife, whether it's between brothers and brothers, leaders, workers, it doesn't matter. What God wants is that we forgive ourselves and we forgive others. The Lord will take you there as you pray with sincerity and honesty. He will change every situation and the Lord will take charge 
and will, it will purge you from all this anger, frustration. Your life will be as pure as the snow in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Father, we thank you for this expose of your word. We thank you for the challenge of your word that you put before us. You tell us so lovely things. I pray that the grace to carry this word and to run with it, you give unto us in Jesus' name. I pray for every home where there is trouble between husband and wife, between parents and children, even in our church, between leadership and members, between workers and worker, between leader and member, whatever the relationship, inside, outside, Lord, help us with the power of your word today. Deliver every shackled heart in Jesus' name. Break all the chains of unforgiveness and take away everything concerning that that will not glorify your name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we are praying. This session is going to be broken into two parts, uh, the interactive session. Uh, the first one will all be together. The second one, I'll tell you how it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be slightly different from what we have done. We well, decided to make the, the program uh, the way we're doing it so that we can comprehend more what we are getting and be able to have uh, a good take home with us to work on as we return back home. Um, can you quickly tell me reasons why you must forgive? Yes. Yes, Sister Ako. It is the command of God. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You are setting yourself free. I like that. You don't forgive, you put yourself in bondage. So you may think you, you are uh, reacting to somebody, but in reality, you are imprisoning yourself. Yes, sir. It is a condition to our own forgiveness. You see now how you can put yourself in bondage for life. And then you keep on binding and loosing, fasting and praying. And you know the Bible says that if you don't, um, the man under authority said, I'm a man under authority. I say to this one, go, he goes. If you don't submit to a higher authority, other authorities will not submit to you. You don't submit to the authority of God, demons allow authority. Evil spirits, afflictions, oppressions, and lower authorities, they won't listen to you also. But when you listen to the higher authority, you decree in the name of the Lord, and then it is done. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So that our prayers will not be hindered. Now you see why many of us are praying and praying and praying, and then we say, it's the devil, it's our attack from home, it is a... Witches and wizards. It's not witches and wizards. And if it is witches and wizards, who are the witches and the wizards? Yourself. Yourself. And remember yesterday we defined the devil. How did we define the devil? Huh? The evil one. So whoever is doing evil is who? Is the devil. Praise God. So preach yourself. A lot. Most of the troubles we're having in our homes, in our families, in our churches will be solved if only we can be one, that one thing, was it? Genuinely converted. Genuinely converted. Yes, I saw some other hands. Yes, sir. Forgive because Christ showed us the example. Amen. Amen. And you see, even Stephen, he was dying, and he said, Father, lead not this to their church. 
Yes, ma'am. It covers multitudes of sin. That doesn't mean you should continue to sin, though. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. I saw another hand. Yes, sir. It's healthy. Can you? I like that. I like that. I can preach a sermon on that. But can you break it down for us a little bit? That's a big grammar. Life story. Life story now. There is a woman. Uh, if I mention the person, Sister Agar will know the person. Elderly woman. Grandma. Went to all these uh, senior people's home to have fun time with other older people. Why she was there, somebody offended her. Today we didn't know what the person did. Or maybe some knew, but I don't know. And she got mad. She got angry. Do you know she got so angry to the point that one of the veins in the head burst? And that's what killed her. Anger. Will you please turn to your neighbor and say, please forgive. And you know, except your spouse is not here, the only person you can talk to is who? <laughs> no, no, no. I say, except your spouse is not here. If your spouse is here, then the only person you can talk to, you can talk to is who? Your spouse. But if your spouse is not here, then you can only talk to yourself. So can you please tell somebody to forgive? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Any other reason why we must? Yes, ma'am. Can you please speak English? So you can finally make heaven. Listen. I'm not sure how many of you have heard this. The founder of redeemed Christian Church of God. In the course of working with people, one of the pastors did something. All right? Now, details we don't know, but, and this man was a holy man of God. No question. No question. But because of the way that thing was handled, he did not fully forgive. And then he died. But because of grace, somebody say grace. We, we have different level of position with God. Amen. Somebody say grace. I pray grace will find us. Amen. This man died and was not allowed into heaven. The news has gone around that the man has died and everything, so they're calling people, come, Papa has gone home, gone home. After some hours, Papa woke up. And as soon as Papa woke up, he said, go and call me pastor so-and-so. The pastor came. And then he said, I'm sorry, I was not allowed into heaven because of you. Because of this situation, that in reality is because of this, because of the passion for God and everything, I forgive you. That same day, the man slept back and went back to glory. That's why I said, somebody say grace. grace. And that's why you see 
Jesus dying in pain, come on, agony of heart, and yet still praying for the people. Stephen dying, they were stoning him. What's, what was Stephen supposed to be saying? You, you will not die well, though. As you are stoning me. <laughs> but these people, they were wise. They knew that with all they have labored for in their life, the last minute count. The devil waited to that, to that moment to say, okay, with all whatever you have done and believed and everything, we will hinder you. And they were wise. That no matter what I say right now does not change anything. The only thing that can change is my eternity. Father, forgive them. Oh, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. I heard of a story of somebody that was seriously sick. Almost to the point of death. And one day, one day, he just heard the voice of the Lord. Taylor, 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 I'm dying, Taylor. Then it struck his mind. When he was to wait years back, the tailor to sew the suit, collected money. And by the wedding day, suit was not ready to be for wedding. Really embarrassment. And the thing, I mean, we are human, right? And he wouldn't let go. Now he was almost dying. And then the thing came back. Taylor, Taylor, to cut the long story short, he sent for Taylor and said, I'm sorry that all these years I had this against you. And Taylor said, ah, I'm the one that's supposed to be apologizing. I'm the one that offended and disappointed you. I'm the one. He said, no, it's not about what you did now. It's about me now. For goodness sake, I forgive everything. That man, few days after that, after that got healed. No prayer, nothing. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Sometimes when you don't forgive, I don't know how you feel. You have some heaviness in your heart. It's like you're carrying a load. And please understand, the people that can offend you the most, the person that can offend you the most in life, the number one person is who? Your spouse. Listen. If you offend me, I don't see you every day. At the most, maybe if you are a faithful worshiper, I see you three times in a week. Am I right? Bible study, tell me the other one. Revival service, and then Sunday service. You carry your, your trouble and you go. <laughs> Am I right? But your wife offended you. As you are waking up in the morning, who do you see? <laughs> you went to work, you thought you are okay. As you come back from work, who do you meet? Your wife. I hope it is your husband. This one is right before you like this. It's harder to forgive than to forgive an outsider. Are you with me? And there are some things people will do to you that will not only hurt you, it will get into your bone and to your marrow. And that's how some people came up with the language over my dead body. It will not be over your dead body. Amen. It will be right in your living body. Amen. Forgiveness is key to our health and strength in marriage relationships. 
we've all offended one another. Are you with me? And the level of your own feeling depends on the way you felt about the offense. And you cannot tell somebody, ah, is that that little thing that made you to act like that? You don't know how the person got injured. So, please, for goodness sake, learn to forgive. I remember I told you yesterday, it's one thing for you to give forgiveness, it's another thing for you to receive forgiveness. When you are giving it, you are releasing yourself. That does not necessarily, automatically, liberate that person or deliver that person. That person needs to do his or her own part also. And what's the part? We, told, we were told yesterday, what's the part of the other person? You ask for it, and then you receive it. If I'm giving you a gift that you don't want, do you get it? No. So, it's two ways. But please, for goodness sake. I hate the people that would say, eh, just forgive, just forgive. You sing that song too much to make the evil do a thing that you continue doing evil. But at the same time, in the same token, for goodness sake, no matter what, please forgive. Let go and let go. If you have to cry, let me tell you what I do when I was a younger Christian. I don't do that anymore. When people do things that hurt me so bad, and as a Christian, I can't, I can't do it back to you. You know what I do? I had somebody just said it. I cry. I cry. I think with maturity now, it still hurts. Amen? The best I do today is hand you over to God. Release myself. Lord, whatever you want to do, I release myself. I forgive this person. If the person now repents, he now gets that forgiveness. Amen? So please, let's forgive one another. It's for your own good. It's for your own health. We don't want to spend too much time. Because our time is gone. I want us to get to the second point. But, be, be, but before we get to the second part, whether you are newly married or you are old timer in the business, honesty now. You know, we've been very honest. You have never offended your spouse. Can I see your hand up? Hello? I'm talking to people that are born again here and sanctified. Oh, are you raising up your hand? No? Ah, okay. <laughs> you know what I did yesterday? You remember what I did so that we're here? Huh? I put down my hand. Praise God. I don't want to be an hypocrite. Give you an impression that, ah, I am perfect. Man, we are all working on it. Amen? Things will happen. And when you forgive, please, you are not changing the past. You are just preparing for a better future. You are not undo what already has been done. You are just saying that I'm not going to dwell on that thing for whatever I'm going to do next. So, if we all are now being sincere with ourselves that we have offended one way or the other, can you spend a minute think within you, what have I done to hurt my spouse? I want to be practical. I tell myself I don't want to labor in vain. I don't want to serve God in vain. I don't, I don't want to preach in vain. Think about it. Be real with yourself. Now, the second part we are really getting into. This is the first phase of the second part. You are thinking now for yourself. You are not thinking, what did my spouse did to me? Mm -mm. Understand? We are concentrating on who here in this meeting? Self. It's me. 
It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. O oh Lord, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. What a spirit of humility. Humility. And trust me, I know some offenses can be very, very painful, heartbreaking. 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 When I told you earlier on about a lady got married and went messing around as a Christian. Somebody came later and said, Pastor, this is mind-boggling. How, how, how can you get that thing off your mind? And they said, this grace. This grace. We're going to do something now. Thank God this building has like four levels. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor Chuba. I said this building has four levels. Three? Four levels. Say yes, Pastor. All right. We have the basement right. We have this level right. We have your office level right. We have the children level. How many level? Is the pastor here? <laughs> All right. This is what we're going to do. Some of us can stay here. I want you to, to take your spouse. Practical session. We don't want to wait until you get home. We want the healing. When you forgive, there is healing. The healing begins from there. It's not fully done, perfected, but you want to initiate it. Get something started. You can stay at that corner, you can stay at that corner, you can stay over here, but you don't want to stay where anybody will hear you. Take your spouse. You can go outside of the building. You can go inside the car. We give ourselves 15 minutes. Go talk as a couple. Amen? If your spouse is not here, whatever the Lord will lay on your heart to do. If you want to pick up a phone to call your spouse, do whatever the Lord wants you to do. That is the second part of this. Forgiveness is key to our health spiritually, physically, financially, matrimonially. In everything, forgiveness. Forgiveness. And you don't just say, I'm sorry. You also want to tell your spouse what you are going to do to make correction. To make correction. Time will not permit me to tell you about a couple. It was the wife that got, got arrested, got converted, and then went to the husband to do repentance, apologize. And then, later on, she found the husband. The husband accepted the apology. Then later on, maybe the following day or so, I can't remember now, the man was now praying and was weeping and crying. Weeping and crying. And then the wife said, what happened? And he said, what happened to you has just happened to me. The Lord has convicted me of my sin. He now turned around and said, honey, it's not just you. I have confessions to make also. And they both did it. And that was the beginning of a new beginning in that relationship. The Lord will help us. You go, you do it prayerfully. I'm not saying just go do a prayer meeting. You have been praying. Now you need to talk. It's what you sow that God will bless. Are we communicating? 
It is what you sow. You talk to one another, and then you pray on that thing. Don't just go and say, okay, let us pray. All the witches and wizards that have been following us all our life. Shall we rise up? It's 2.16 right now. I want us to be back in 15 minutes. God bless you. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. When I say rise up, I mean rise up and move. Wherever you want to go, you can go to the fourth floor, third floor. There are different rooms in all the floors. You want to stay here?